Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everyone. Okay, today it's Monday and we are uh, in the beginning of the week and in the beginning of this session. This is the week number three and we are going to do a little um, feedback of the last topics or the last week. And in the last week we had some topics that we were developing um, in dates before, but we had uh, some exercises uh, that I see that some of you had sent the document to the group. Uh, this is the, uh, the exercise that we um, uh, have to develop um, through the weekend. So, in the exercise, we have the practice one that it is to refer to people, places, and things that it's about the nouns. And we have to identify the nouns and underline two nouns in each sentence. So we are going to um, do the exercises, uh, uh, something really quick so we can uh, see the answers. In this case, it is uh, really simple because we already know what are the nouns and what kind of nouns do we have. Okay, in this case, in the sentence number one, what are the nouns? Summer and lake. Summer and lake, okay, summer. And lake, oh, oh my God. Summer and lake, okay. In the number two. Month and birthday. Okay, month and birthday. That's good. In the number three. Birds and winter. And winter. It's in winter. Okay. Number four. Brother and brother speech. Uh-huh. My brother and speech. Good. Number five. Dog, dog and puppies. And puppy. Okay. Dog and puppies. Yeah. <laughs> Number six. Park and dogs. Park and dogs. Good. Number seven. Light, Light and window. Light and window. Number eight. Teacher. 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 Teachers in classroom. That's right. Teacher in classroom. Number nine. Cat fireplace. fireplace. Okay. Cat and fireplace. Okay. And the number ten. Man. Man. Honesty. 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 Okay. Okay, and that is the first part, right? In this part, you have just to um, identify the nouns. We have two nouns for each sentence. In the second one, you have to uh, use nouns to fill the blank with the noun that you have done. In this case, I said that you can write uh, the noun that you want. So, in the first uh, sentence, I am going to ask some of you to give me your um, 
your answer because maybe you have different answer for each sentence. In this case, Patricia, what is the noun that you used in the number one? Dog. The dog, the dog. has run a food science last year. Okay, dog, good. Let's see. Edith, and the number two, what is your answer to that uh, sentence or the nouns that you use? Um, I can hear you, Edith. You can write the answers. I am. I will wait for you. Don't worry. Okay, let's see. Okay, the trip to uh, watch a pan. Nice. Will take two hours. Good, thank you. Oh my God, it is no capital letter. Okay, number three, uh, let's see, Reinaldo, the nouns that you use in the number three. Mm. My teacher Blanca has recorded her classroom. Okay, Blanca has redecorated her classroom. Okay, thank you. Classroom, good. Let's see, Diana, for the number four. Uh, Bob brought to a school on a bus. On a bus, okay. Thank you. Roberto, for the number five. Number five. Yes. I gave my grandmother a photo album for her birthday. A photo album. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For her birthday. Good. Let's see. Um, Ailey, number six. Uh, many cars are many cars? in our plot. In our? Plot. Plot. Yes. Like this? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Let's see, someone else. Luis, for the number seven. Um, tonight we are going to the party. Okay, we are going to the party. Nice, thank you. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, Jimmy, number eight. Number eight, good evening. Good evening. Excellent. 
number eight. Yes, this number homework, eight. Yes. This homework assignment requires plenty of time. Time, good. This homework assignment requires plenty of time. Good, thank you. Let's see someone else. Okay. Herbert, for the number nine. We'll see grandparents at the weekend. Okay. Wait. The first noun, what is? We will see what? We'll see grandparents. Ah, your grandparents. Okay, at the weekend, good. Let me see, someone else. Reina Isabel, number 10. I think the speaking uh, will improve next, next two years. Two years, okay. Two years. Good, thank you. And we have here some sentences, right? In the number one, the dog has grown a foot since last year. The trip to a water pond will take two hours. My teacher Blanca has redecorated her classroom. Number four, Bob rode to school on a bus. Number five, I gave my grandmother a photo album for her birthday. Many cars are ground in our plot. Number seven, tonight we are going to the party. Number um, eight, this homework assignment, let me see, requires plenty of time. Number nine, we will see grandparents at the weekend. And number 10, I think the speaking will improve next in the next two years. So we are going to add here in the next two years. So then we have to classify nouns and you have to write uh, five nouns depending of the categories. We have people, places, and things. So uh, in the number one, we have neighbor. In the number two, uh, boardwalk. And the number three, suitcase. So I know that you had uh, the classification of the nouns, but just we are remembering the um, exercises. And the next exercise, you have to write um, five sentences on your own. And then number one, write a sentence using two nouns that name family members. Who wants to read the sentence? Hi, teacher. <clears throat> Tell me. My husband and I have two children. They are Camilo and Fidel. Okay. Good. Then you have to write, and the number two, write a sentence using a noun that names a living thing you can see. Who wants to read the sentence? Me, teacher. Tell me. My beard is small. Okay, thank you, that's good. Number three, write a sentence using a noun that names an idea you cannot usually see, an idea. Who wants to read the sentence for number three? Okay. Patience is a virtue that we must cultivate. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Number four, write a sentence using a noun that names a non-living thing you can see. Who wants to read that sentence? Me, teacher. Tell me. Um, yes, please. Um, 
<laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, I bought a new lamp for my desk. Okay, a new lamp. That's good. Mm -hmm. Number five, write a sentence using nouns that name two or more cities or states you would like to visit. Who wants to read the sentence for number five? Me, teacher. Tell me. I would like to visit Buenos Aires and Machu Picchu in South America. Oh, that's good. Thank you. And number six, write a sentence using nouns that name animals in the zoo. Who wants to read the sentence for number six? Me, teacher. Tell me. The lion is the king of jungle. Oh, that's good. Thank you. So then we had the, um, the sentence to talk about wishes. So we had 20 sentences and you have to uh, write the uh, gap with the correct word. So I'm going to uh, develop the sentence. You are going to uh, see if you write the word in the correct um, order. So let me see. Okay, we have the number one. I wish I had me. Had me. Yes, had me do earlier because we have become fantastic friends. Number two, do you wish you were a doctor? So let me do this a little bigger. Okay, number three. I wish you would. That's good. Shut up. It is annoying. Number four. They wish that their dog were not ill. Where? Mm -hmm. Where? All the time. Number five. I wish. Cool. I, excellent. I cool. I speak English fluently and with ease. Number six. He wishes he had. That's good. He had a girlfriend. Number seven. We which we call hell. Have okay. Good. Oops. Number eight. I wish I had. had. Good. Mm -hmm. Number nine, they wish they had, had. had gone to the university because they will have, have had a more successful career. Number 10, we wish we could cool. meet our role models. Number 11, had. I, I had. 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 Again. Good. 12. I wish you cool. were, were yeah. friendlier to your husband. Next one. I wish I cool. cool. Next one. We wish you cool. cool. Good. Next one, I wish you cool, cool. cool again. <clears throat> and I wish I had good. Next one, I wish I had again. Do you wish you had, cool. had married someone else? Next one, I wish I um, had, had, had gone, had. okay. Then we have, I wish where? you were not such an idiot. You are such a moron. I wish you will stop being like that. 
Number 22, like this. I wish I wear. I wear. Good. Number 23. I wish I cabinet. I knew. New. New. Good. New. New. I wish I cool. Cool. And the last one. Has. Has. Just like that. Thank you so much. I I see that you really did your homework. So let's go to the new topic that we are going to develop today. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about grammar or some topics in grammar. Now we are going to develop the following topics. We have the present perfect and the past tense and simple past tense. But right now, we are going to talk about um, the present perfect. That is the first part for today. Present perfect. So here we have that a present perfect is formed a, with the present tense of the verb have and the past participle of a verb. Um, before we were talking about the verbs and we were talking about the uh, tenses and we have the base form, the past, and we have also the past participle. You already have the list in the group. Ustedes ya tienen la lista de los verbos. Así que no es eh, cosa de otro mundo, el past participle. You have the list and you can use it to develop this topic or to understand, understand better this topic. So in that list, you have the files, the, uh, you have a table and you have the spaces, the base form, the past and the past participle that is the number three. So. Uh, then it says that we have some structures here. We have the positive form that we have the subject that is very important. And we already know that the subjects are the pronouns or the uh, proper nouns or nouns of people, right? So we have the subject plus has and have. This is something that we already know because we know that we have has or the rule for the third person and we have have with the other uh, subject or pronouns. So we have he, she, it, and we are going to use has with those uh, pronouns. He, she, it, has. And then we have the verb in past participle, is started. In this case, we are, we are using a, 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 this verb that ends with, with ed, right? A regular verb. This is a regular verb. We are not using a irregular verb right now because this is the example. Then we have I, you, we, and they. And we are going to use have. Then we have the verb in past participle. And we have some examples. I have done it. He has done it. Okay, we are going to use have and has. Then we have the negative form that is the same. Just we are going to add the not to the has and have. Subject plus has and have not plus past participle. He, she, it has not or hasn't started. Then I, you, we, they have not or haven't started. And we have the examples. I have not done it. He has not done it. That is the same sentence, just we are going to add the not 
to let them know or let people know that we are uh, using the negative form. But it's the same uh, sentence, just adding some uh, negative statements or negative words to make a negative sentence. Then we have the question form that is also almost the same, but changing the places. In this case, we have the has and have at the beginning, then we have the subject, and at the end, we have the past participle with the question mark that is very important to remember. So in the question form, we have has and have plus subject plus past participle. Has he, she, or it started? Have I, you, we, and they started? Then we have the examples. You have done it is the, the base uh, sentence. And then we have the question, have you done it? Then we have, she, she has done it. And we have the question, has she done it? But in this case, the question that um, it is not something um, really hard for us to understand because we were um, working with a structure since day one. So we know that we um, need to change some words to make questions. Para nosotros no es muy difícil eh, hacer preguntas porque ya habíamos hecho esto antes, ya hemos visto estructuras. Así que no es algo con lo que nos vayamos a detener mucho. So we are going to um, uh, talk about the present tense or present perfect tense. So we have the structure here first, but now we are going to talk about the uses. So we use the present perfect And we have here some uses. The first one for something done started in the past and continues in the present. Okay, for something that is started in the past, algo que empezó en el pasado, and continues in the present, y continúa en el presente. That's one of the uses of the uh, present perfect. But we have some examples. Let's see, number one. They have been, this is the verb, marrying for nearly 50 years. We have here the have, and we have here, this is our main verb in this case. But we have another one here. So they have been married for nearly 50 years. Han estado casado por al menos 50 años. So in this case, they get married or using the past of the verb, they got married uh, 50 years ago. And now they um, are still married. Cosas que pasan eh, o que ocurrieron en el pasado, pero que todavía suceden. En este caso, ¿verdad? Personas que se casaron hace 50, 40, 30, 20 años, pero siguen estando casados. That's one of the examples. Number two, she has lived in Liverpool all her life. Oh. Okay, she has lived. We have here the structure, has and the verb. 
She has lived in Liverpool all her life. Ella ha vivido en Liverpool toda su vida. So, she was born in Liverpool and now she is still live in Liverpool. So, that's something that um, uh, something that started in the past but continues in the present. So, we have the second uh, use of the present perfect. The second one says, when we are talking, when we are talking about our experience, up to the present. We are talking about our experience up to the present. Let's mark this one. And we have the examples. Number one, I have, in this case, I've seen, that film before. Number two, I played the or ever since I was a teenager. And number three, he has written three books. And he's working on another one. So we're talking about experience. In this case, we have here the structure. Then we have here the structure and we have here the structure. So in the number one, I have seen that film before. Estamos hablando de nuestra experiencia para algo del presente, right? So in, in la número uno, yo ya había visto esa película antes o ya he visto esa película antes. So in that case that we were um, talking with someone about movies, and one of our friends says, I like maybe a Star Wars. And I didn't see the movie. So I want to see that movie this weekend. And you can say, oh, I've seen that film before. Uh, and I have experience with the movie because I have, I have seen um, that film. In the second one, I play the guitar ever since I was a teenager. So I have experience with the, that instrument. So I have some um, things that I can say about that instrument. And the number three, he has written three books and he's working on another one. So he has experience writing books and now, he is writing another one. So, in the first one, eh, en los usos, en el primero tenemos algo que comenzó en el pasado y que continúa en el presente. En el segundo uso, tenemos de eh, hablar de nuestra experiencia para algo del presente. Now, we are going to see the number three of the uses of this structure or this tense. In the number three says, we often use the adverb, we often use the adverb ever to talk about experience up to the present. In this case, we are talking about experience again, but we are using ever, this word ever, to uh, talk about that experience. So we have here the example. My last birthday, 
My last birthday was the worst day. I have ever had. In this case, we can say that ever is like an auxiliary, but it is helping us to talk about experience. In the sentence, my last birthday was the worst day I have ever had. Que algo que nunca he tenido. Que, eh, mi último cumpleaños fue el peor día que he tenido. Right? So it is just helping us to talk about experience up to the present. And we have something here. And we use never for the negative form. And we have here one example. Have you ever met George? This is a question. Have you ever, using ever, meet George? That's the question, using ever. But we are going to answer with a negative uh, sentence, right? We are going to use the never because it is a, a negative form to answer. Yes, but I, have never met his wife. Okay, in the question, someone is asking us if we uh, know who is George, or maybe we know who he is. But in our uh, answer is yes, we uh, know who is George, but we have never met his wife. Ok, el ever es como para las oraciones eh, afirmativas. Eh, oraciones positivas donde nosotros vamos a eh, dar o hablar de nuestra experiencia. Pero el never nos va, a ser, nos va a servir a nosotros para hablar en forma negativa. En estas oraciones donde tenemos eh, las dos, los dos usos, ¿verdad? Del ever y del never. En el Primero, alguna vez, o ya has conocido a George, y en la respuesta sí, pero nunca he conocido a su esposa. No es la típica eh, negative sentence using not. In this case, we are just saying that we never met someone. So, we have another um, use of this tense. It says, for something that happened, for something that happened in the past, but it is important in the present. This is different to the first one. Let's see the number uh, one. This, for something that starts in the past and continues in the present. Algo que sucedió en el pasado, pero que continúa en el presente. Esta, it says, for something that happened in the past, but it is important in the present. Algo que pasó, en, obviamente, en el pasado, pero es importante. No sigue pasando. Just, it is important in the present. Solo es importante en el presente. And we have these examples. Number one, I can get, in the house i can get in in the house why because i have lost my keys i can get in in, in the house i lost my keys no puedo entrar a la casa porque perdí mis llaves something that happened in the past but it is important in the present no puedo traer a la casa porque perdí las llaves. ¿Cuándo? No lo sé, no me di cuenta. So, number two. Teresa isn't home. Isn't at home. 
I think she has gone shopping. Teresa isn't at home. Why? I think she has gone shopping. She left the house and we don't know where she is, but we think that she is shopping. Something that happened in the past, but it is important in the present. Then we have, they have gone, they have been and have gone. Have been, that you already see um, that one in one of the sentence, I think. I have been in this in this one. They have been. We are going to see what are the uses of have been and have gone. And we have the first use. It says we use have or has been when someone has gone to a place and returned. Okay, we are going to use has been, this one. So let's pay attention. We use have or has been when someone has gone to a place and returned. Utilizamos el has been cuando alguien se fue, pero regresó. Se fue, pero regresó. Es el uso del has been. And we have some examples. Number one. Where have you been? That's the question. Where have you been? And the answer is, I've just been out to the supermarket. Have you ever been to San Francisco? That's another question. Have you ever been to San Francisco? And the answer is no, but I have been to Los Angeles. So in our cases, we can use this sentence uh, when we visit some uh, places in our uh, country. For example, maybe, um, have you ever been to San Salvador? Or have you ever been to San Miguel? Or have you ever been to Usulutan? Or have you ever been to Santa Ana? So in, in that uh, sentence or questions, we are asking someone that if uh, they have uh, traveled to the places but returned to their houses in the same day, in the same week, or in the same month. But the important thing here is that we use has been or have been for a, someone that has gone to a place and returned to the original place. So, but, but when someone has not returned, we use has or have gone. Ya dijimos que el has been es para cuando una persona se va pero regresa. Pero en el caso de que no regrese, Vamos a utilizar el have or has gone. But when, so let me, okay. But when someone has no, not return, we use have or has gone. And we have the examples. Where is Maria? Where is Maria? I haven't 
I haven't seen here for weeks. And the number two, she's, she has gone to Paris for a week. She will be back tomorrow, maybe. So, someone has no return. We use have or has gone. So, have and has been is for someone that has gone but returned. And have or has gone is for someone that has not returned. In the sentence, someone is asking for Maria. Where is Maria? I haven't seen for weeks. We don't know where she is. But in the second one, it says she's going to Paris for a week. She will be back tomorrow. Maybe she will be back tomorrow. Maybe not. So in this case, we have the uses of have been and have gone. Questions to this information? We are okay? I think we are. So let's see. Let's do uh, an exercise. So let me do this. We have exercise one. We have um, something interesting about these exercises. We are going to develop some exercise and I have the number one, but you have to pay attention to the sentences. Why? Because we are going to do another exercise and you need to remember the sentence for the first exercise. So we are going to develop the exercise number two, and then we are going to continue with the topic. Then we are going to develop the exercise number two. So in this case, I am going to ask you uh, to help me with the sentences. So I am going to know if you are paying attention to the sentence that you are reading in the structures that we are using. So we have the exercise number one. Exercise one. We have the, this, um, it says complete. We are going to complete these sentences with the past simple of the verb. Ah, in this case, we are going to use it, use the, um, the simple past. Um, we are using just the structure of the present perfect, but why I am using the, um, the simple past? Because uh, in this case, the simple past, we already uh, study the uh, structures. Nosotros ya estudiamos el, el pasado simple en la week number one. Y eh, in this week, we are going to just do um, a feedback of the topic. Solo vamos a hacer un feedback de el simple past or past simple. So in this case, I am using the uh, structure for the exercise number one. So it is not related to the, uh, the, the topic right now. So. The, that's the point. Um, with about simple of the verbs. I just wanted to clarify that. So John, um, think that is run the exercise. Okay, the number one, the young man, and we have the verb, take, He got his wallet and we have the verb. Okay. The bill. 
So I'm going to write the 10 sentences. Then you are going to um, <clears throat> change the verbs to the past. And um, it's almost time. So you have time to just uh, find the, uh, the, the verbs. So let's see. Then I am going to ask you the answers. When Lucy, the interview, remember that you have the uh, list of verbs in the group. And if you haven't, you can ask for the list of verbs. And you can use it to uh, solve these um, sentences. We leave. The motorway and drive in our I think I to write some great great novels but he never win a prize number seven the Norris The little boy and speak to himself. Number eight, when they when they Everybody run Last year, the company and the last one when Jose.
Okay. Of work. Okay, we have the sentence here. And we have the number one, the young man in, uh, we have the verb take. So what are we going to do with um, those verbs? It says that we need to uh, have these verbs in past simple. So we are going to uh, have these um, verbs in past. Solo vamos a pasarlos al pasado simple. It is not something complicated because we already know some of these verbs in past. So we have the young man take. In this case, we are going to change the time out his wallet and pay the bill. Number two, when Lucy go to the interview, she wear her best suit. Number three, we leave the motorway and drive for an hour on quiet country roads. Number four, I think I know my irregular birds, but now I am not sure. Number five, as soon as I met, uh, meet Doris, I know she be someone special. Number six, Tolstoy writes some great novels, but he never win a prize. The nurse put the little boy to bed and speak to him softly. Number eight, when they hear the fire alarm, everybody run out of the building. Number nine, last year, the company built a new factory which cost million of dollars. And the number 10, when Jose break his arm, the doctor give him two weeks of work. So we have three minutes and you can uh, read the sentence, think of the answers. And tomorrow um, at the beginning of the session, we are going to develop the uh, exercise. And then we are going to continue with the topic. And then we are going to develop another one. Oh, another exercise. And that is something really interesting to do because it is related to this one. So you have, um, let's see, you have two minutes to read the sentence and think of the answer. Okay, it's time to end the session. So 
tomorrow we are going to answer or say the correct verbs to this sentence. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.